Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes questions from NASA headquarters. Please stand by for a voice check from Marshall Space Flight Center PAO. Atlantis ISS, this is Marshall Space Flight Center PAO. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Hi, my name is Ricky Klaus uh, from WHNT News 19, and I wanted to ask, much of the world was watching as you guys skyrocketed into space, excited, you know, loving to see you. What, what was going through your heads when, when that was happening? Well, there's a lot of emotions going through your mind. It's it, the uh, a space shuttle launch is a very interesting experience. It's it's kind of like uh, the the year in the year prior to the launch, you're preparing for the Super Bowl, but you don't know exactly what day the Super Bowl is. So you get all prepared, and uh, even on the day of the rescheduled launch, you're looking at the weather, thinking, is, are we going to go? Aren't we going to go? And on this launch, it was no different. We had a 70% uh, chance of not going, but we got to prepare as if we're going. And you, you walk out there and you look at this amazing vehicle on the launch pad and you, and you just, uh, nothing comes to your mind but wow. And you get up there and strap in and you're still waiting. And uh, you never know for sure whether you're going until at the last second. Because we had a hold at 31 seconds and we are going, oh no, now what? And uh, the funny thing about that is they picked up the count and all of a sudden it was like, ready, set, go. And bam, we were off to the races. And uh, we were getting shot off the planet and it was just absolutely amazing. So... The whole ride up, you, you get your big wide-eyed and just experiencing all the uh, all the, the the thrill of the G's and also the uh, incredible sights and sounds you hear. With Way 31 in Huntsville, you guys are part of a very exclusive club on the last shuttle mission. What are some of the moments that you're relishing the most right now? Well, I think we're all relishing just the, the fact that we're in space again. We're able to float around. We're here on the space station, working with the space station crew, uh, just living in this environment and, and working hard to make this a, a better place to live and to sustain it for the next year. It really is special being up here, and, and whenever we're up here, we just try and savor that as much as we can, um, whether you're on your first shuttle mission, your second shuttle mission, or this, the last shuttle mission. My name is Monica Ricks. I'm with WASF out of the Rocket City. And Sandy, I've been admiring your hair all morning. And this question is for you, too. You've been, this is your second time up at the ISS. <laughs> um, tell me the changes that have gone through the space station and, and how it looks now. And also, you've got six days left before, uh, you know, some crew members leave. Is there anything you want to do before you fly back? Well, certainly the space station feels a lot like home. The minute we opened the hatch, I, I felt like I'd never left. But in the, in the meantime, that since I'd been here two years ago, several new modules have arrived, uh, the most enjoyable one of which is the cupola, which is this very nice windowed uh, module that we can see these spectacular views of the Earth. So almost after, uh, a couple hours after we docked and we had a break, we all ran up to the cupola to see the view from there. So the station, uh, you know, it's the same, but yet it's different in some ways. A lot of the operations still the same. These guys are taking great care of it. As far as the remaining time of the mission, we're going to finish out our transfer, and hopefully we'll get that done a little bit early, and we'll have some time to spend in the cupola and at some of the other windows and just with our station colleagues and, uh, and share some memories before we have to leave. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes questions from the Marshall Space Flight Center. We will rejoin you after a brief comm dropout. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. Back with you. Please stand by for a voice check from the Ames Research Center. Atlantis ISS, this is Ames Research Center PAO. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear, Ames. It's going to take us about another 30 seconds or so to get all set in the camera view for you. <laughs> that was probably the most entertaining thing you'll see all day. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, good morning. Uh, this is Bob Rebell. I'm with NBC Bay Area, the home market of Rex Walheim. So my question is for you, uh, Rex. 
What are your thoughts on the shuttle program coming to an end? Uh, what do you think its legacy is going to be? And most importantly, were you able to spot San Carlos, your hometown, from outer space? Well, to answer the, uh, the, the first one, I, I, we did have a, a pass over uh, California just in time, actually, as I was having a, a family conference, a uh, private family conference, the only one we have during the mission, uh, with my wife and two boys. And so I had a chance to, to see us coming over California. The Bay Area was a little bit foggy, so I couldn't quite see San Francisco, but it was spectacular to see the, uh, the Central Valley and uh, some of Southern California, a little bit of Northern California. The shuttle's legacy, as far as that goes, uh, number one, it, uh, it sent probes to different planets. It, it launched probes. It launched great observatories like the Hubble Space Telescope. And then the crown jewel of the space shuttle program is it uh, helped to build this magnificent International Space Station that we're on right now. It wouldn't be the size of the magnitude without the space shuttle. And the space shuttle's had a storied 30-year career, but what I like to think is the space shuttle's legacy lives on. Hubble will still be taking picture. Our crewmates here will still be doing research on the International Space Station, and the, the, that's all a legacy of the shuttle which will continue to live on. And for the future, I'm hoping that as the, sh the shuttle's retired, that money that we would be spending on the shuttle is available to not only continue the International Space Station research, but to go beyond. We need to get back in the exploration business where we're going to an asteroid or to the moon or to Mars. Good morning, this is Matt Bigler, KCBS Radio, and this is a question for Rex or whoever would like to field it. And uh, we're speaking to you from Silicon Valley, the home of Google and Facebook and things like social media and the iPhone. And my question is, what effect do you think that some of these high-tech innovations have had on America's interest in space travel and our ability to explore the final frontier? Well, I think uh, the technology is, it, it has an inherent interest, and people just take an inherent interest in it. And I think uh, Silicon Valley is the genesis of a lot of the technology we use here on the space station. So uh, I really do think it, it plays in a very important role from, uh, from, uh, from inspiring grade school kids to actually providing the science that we need to do our, do our research here. And I think that's going to always keep people curious, and curiosity is a very important thing that you need to, uh, to be able to develop a space program and then develop a good research program that uh, can really pay incredible dividends here in space. Hi, this is Jane Lee with the San Jose Mercury News, and this question is for Rex Walheim. Um, I was wondering what you felt when you found out that you were going to be on the last shuttle mission. Well, I think like most of us, I was very honored. I, it, it was so great to get a chance to, to fly in space again. I wasn't sure, uh, none of us were really sure we were ever going to get a chance because they had assigned the last mission. And so we thought, well, our chance had, uh, had, gone, uh, had gone by. It's kind of like being at, uh, at Disneyland and uh, the ride closing just before you get to the front of the line. Uh, but then they added a new flight, and we were kind of getting close to the, uh, to, the, to the front, and we were, we were very, very fortunate enough to be entrusted to fly on this mission, and uh, uh, I was extremely overjoyed to get a chance to, to chance to come here again. It's an amazing place up here in the space station. Good morning. Alan Thayer with KFTL-TV 28, and this also is for Rex, our hometown representative. Rex, I'd like to know how your many contributions to the shuttle and the ISS programs, as well as the magnificent views of Earth and the stars from your vantage point, how have all these helped shape you as a person and have led you to ponder humankind's place in the cosmos? Well, it is an absolutely amazing creation looking out on the Earth, and there's just, it, you can't describe it. And we are, uh, we're all trying to continue to this, this exploration of space, and one of the things we want to do is make it more accessible to everyday people, to get everybody a chance to come in space one day, because it, it changes your perspective. Look at us here. We have 10 people from three different countries. We have Americans, Russians, and a Japanese astronaut, and we're all working together. We live together, work together, solve problems together, laugh together, and it's just an amazing camaraderie, and we're one big team, and we execute the plan as one big team. And you look down at the Earth, that's just one big planet. We're all in it together. And I think the more people we get up here uh, to see that perspective, the better off we'll be. Hi, my name is Jade Hernandez. I'm with KTVU Channel 2 News. It's the Fox affiliate. My question is for Mission Specialist Rex Walheim. Rex, tell me, students from all over will get a chance to see you in space. What do you have to tell them? How do you inspire them to look to the future? How do they get in space? Well, for me, I, what I tell them is, is, number one, work hard, especially in math and science. 
and number two have persistence because as hard as you work it's going to take some persistence because i can remember as a kid sitting in my backyard in san carlos looking up at the airplanes that were circling around to go land in san francisco and thinking wow i hope i get a chance to to fly someday and to be right here with my crewmates and we're flying over uh, over the earth at two hundred miles up at seventeen thousand five hundred miles an hour it's it's really a dream come true and it's another i mean just this, the the simple things like floating and and flying in, the, in in zero gravity is just absolutely amazing everybody dreams about uh, about the dreams where you can fly and here you can actually do it so it's uh, it's absolutely amazing and your dreams really can come true atlantis iss this is houston acr that concludes questions from ames research center please stand by for a voice check from jaxa pao Atlantis ISS, uh, this is JAXA PAO. How do you hear me? We read you loud and clear. How me? Kobayashi from NTV. I have a question to uh, Mr. Furukawa, Dr. Furukawa. Well, the ISS, which everyone is on board, um, I believe um, that um, the space shuttle has made major contribution to building the ISS. And also, um, the shuttle has continued to carry the Japanese astronauts, and uh, the space shuttle will be um, ending and retiring this time. What is your feeling about the retirement of the space shuttle? Hi. Yes, um, the space shuttle um, is, um, has brought about hopes, dreams, and also a challenging spirit to Japan as well as the Japanese people. And um, the, um, for the Japanese astronauts who were on board the ISS, um, I believe um, that the fact that I personally was able to welcome the crew on board the last space shuttle was something of a great honor for me. It is regretful that um, the space shuttle will be retiring, but I believe that, that this is a step towards the future programs. It will be a st new starting point for future programs. I uh, think um, that the U.S. Um, and uh, American colleagues are ch have a challenging spirit, and I respect them very much for that challenging spirit. My name is Saito from NBS. I have a question to astronaut Furukawa. Well, I'm reading your Twitter messages all the time. Well, you've said that you've grown accustomed to zero gravity. And have you experienced any changes in your physical condition or your mental condition, something interesting? And um, also, um, could you talk about it from a doctor's perspective as well as an um, individual's perspective? Uh, well, it's very difficult to make a distinction there, but um, first, um, uh, what I feel interesting is that um, my senses, how I feel, well, um, yes, um, you lose um, um, the feeling of being um, vertical or horizontal. Now, where your legs are located, you feel like it's the floor. And if you change your posture, and, and um, then that place where your feet are located feel like the floor. So um, I think um, that when we say the upside and downside, it's uh, um, just for the sake of convenience. In outer space, I think it's just in relative terms that you feel that you are upside down or the other way around. Haruno from NHK, um, astronaut Furukawa. Another thing about the shuttle. Well, um, well, it was a tough. Um, um, well, um, the Soyuz. Um, you've flown the Soyuz, but don't you wish that you had been on board the shuttle? Hi, Igor. Thank you for Thank you for that very good question. Of course, um, um, in order to become a mission specialist, I have undergone harsh training, and I wish I had been able to travel on the space shuttle, but not everything goes as you wish in life. But um, at present, I'm very satisfied uh, because um, there are three reasons for this. Um, first um, is um, that um, the Soyuz, um, this is a very highly reliable uh, Russian uh, space um, vehicle. And um, 
I was able to on board the Soyuz um, to arrive at the ISS and to make contributions to the ISS activities. And the second is that um, I, as a Japanese astronaut, was able to welcome the last crew on board the space shuttle. And also, the space shuttle Atlantis. Um, I uh, believe um, that um, I was the first um, to encounter At Atlantis, and also um, um, Chris um, uh, Ferguson, the commander, has um, made my wish come true, and he let me sit in his commander's seat and take a photo. So um, that was a wish come true. I'm Komiyama of Asashi Shimbun News. Question to Ms. Uh, Dr. Furukawa. This is about the month since you have left uh, the ground, and probably you have opportunity to look at the disaster hit area from IS. If you have any message to those people who had been impacted by the disaster, would you please give? As the message. Yes, uh, I personally traveled to Tohoku area when I was a high school student, and I was very moved by those people who are very friendly uh, people there. So I have very good memory of visiting there. And four months have passed, but I believe that things are still very difficult for them. But uh, what I can say is that if we continue to do uh, what you can do on the day, tomorrow would be better than today. And also, um, all the colleagues from here, from U.S. and Russia, everyone uh, very much concerned, and they, they give uh, good wishes. And not only U.S. and Russia, but all the people in the world uh, cheering up and trying to be in support. So I hope that uh, keep on trying, Japan. This is a question to Mr. Furukawa again from your Miura newspaper. You had worked very hard for the last 12 years, and uh, you finally came to the space. And did you encounter anything that you didn't expect in space? Well, most of the things went as I had been trained. However, one thing that uh, I was a bit uh, surprised was that the things do not stay on surface, because if it is on the ground, if we put something of objects on the table, it will stay there, but it will flow out in space. So uh, here we use Velcro to try to fix them on surface. And even if it is fixed, sometimes they float. So that was rather things that I was not tr trained enough in on the Earth, so I'm learning it in situ here. Uh, I'm Oe from Uchu News, uh, Space News from TV Tokyo. You earlier mentioned that uh, but I understand that you visited Space Shuttle to hear a wake-up call. So you are, you are now in space and you visited Space Shuttle, and uh, how did you feel? Uh, listening to Wake Up Call by Elton John, I understand. How did you feel that? Feel about it? Uh, well, when I went into Space Shuttle, uh, I felt that it was really looked like the training Space Shuttle in Houston, so it's made very well, and it smelled actually very much like a training facility in Houston. So it was exactly the same environment as I had been trained in Houston. I, I was very moved to hear the Wake Up Call the music by Elton John. And I was very grateful for that opportunity that was, that was given to me. Dr. Furukawa, uh, I would like to hear about uh, World Cup ladies, uh, women's uh, World Cup. And uh, you have a lot of American, U.S. friends around here, but what do you uh, think is going to be the result and score for the World Cup final? 
Well, it might be difficult to answer to your question in this environment, but uh, what I can say is that all the athletes, supporters, all the people who are concerned there, I hope that everyone would do their best. That's my wish. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, media at Johnson Space Center, Kennedy Space Center, NASA Headquarters, Marshall Space Flight Center, Ames Research Center, and in Japan. Atlantis ISS, we are now resuming operational audio communications.